Okay, I'm hoping y'all will find me over here. Uh, so we're going to hang out together until uh, everyone decides to come on in. I'm sending a new post out on uh, Facebook. Hopefully you guys and girls will find the link. Hopefully, y'all will find this link. There's a new live stream. I just posted it in the Facebook group. The link is in the Spindle TV, not group, Spindle training videos page on Facebook. All right, we're going to hang out here for a few minutes until everybody shows up. I'm not sure exactly what happened, uh, but yeah. Well, interesting.
it may not be meant to be tonight. I posted a new link in the spindle training videos Facebook page, but it won't even let me post a new link for YouTube. I don't think it's on my end, but I'm not sure. I think there's an issue with YouTube right now. Someone just said they believe it's an issue with YouTube. Well, shit. I don't know. What do we do? Yeah, and the new link uh, just crashed as well. Said uh, the stream was interrupted. Are you still in the original video chat room by chance? Is, uh, can you see people trying to chat or talk to each other? Chat or talk to each other? Oh, 
bummer, dude. My nose itches. Sucks. Yeah, the second one crashed too. It's not on my end. It's got to be something in YouTube. I kind of think we're going to have to postpone till tomorrow or something. I'm going to post in the Facebook Spindle Training Videos page that due to unforeseen circumstances... We'll have to postpone. Hello, can y'all see me? <laughs> can you chat? It's not on my end, guys. There's something going on with YouTube because this crashed twice as well. So if you can hear me, see if you can type something in the chat. There's four of you here, so I think we're going to have to postpone. Uh, I don't know what to do. I can't go back to the original stream. It won't let me re-energize it. You guys can't chat. There's ten in here now, but I think nine. I don't know what to do. It's it's something on YouTube. It's it's I didn't do it, guys. I swear I didn't break the system. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, and YouTube this crashed twice. Uh I, I think we're going to have to postpone till tomorrow until it gets worked out. Somebody from a 908, whoever's calling me, I'm on the phone. Now, now I can see all the chats. Um, okay. Try let's, let's, uh, let's see the chats to come back. See if uh, you can comment in there. I can see y'all's comments now. I know I'm live, so I'm on the phone with Bob. He called trying to tell me what he what y'all are seeing. Okay. Yeah. You might have to fast forward when you refresh, you might have to fast forward to where we're at or something. Yeah, now I'm in a new link, Bob. I'm in a new link. I don't know if you know that. On the Facebook group, I posted a new link uh, to the new that I created. I had to create a new stream. The last one crashed twice. Okay. If you go to Spindle Training Videos on YouTube, you'll see the link. You'll see a link at the in the post where it says "Find Me Here." Okay. All right. I'm live, so there, there's people here. All right. Thank you. All right, so that was Bob. 
uh, customer of mine trying to tell me what you guys were seeing. Hopefully you can hear me now. I can see your chats. No, it wasn't a Windows update. It wasn't me at all. I swear, guys. Uh, one minute you were there. The next minute it said zero viewers. Uh, and I was talking to myself. And then I got text messages and all letting me know we lost you. Um, and so I created a second stream and it crashed. Fingers crossed that this one works. Did Windows send an update? <laughs> Big Daddy Fish. No, it wasn't a Windows update. Um, can y'all hear me? Please, somebody throw something in the chat saying, yeah, we hear you now. Fine. Or something. Um, okay, good. Mike Smith says the chat's back up. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Yes. All right. So what I was saying before we were interrupted, thanks for coming. Thanks for finding me again, guys and girls and coming back. What I was saying was that um, the Spectra 540, uh, 54. Oh, heck. I don't forgot the number. I got so razzled. <laughs> The uh, Spectra 51404K bit cut beautifully in the Candlestone. Uh, it's a plastic cutting bit, uh, Spectra coated zero flute, O flute. However, it's not a zero flute, O flute. Um, but it did beautifully. It took about 20 minutes uh, to pocket that out. And uh, I started about 3.30 this morning, you know, somewhere around there, 3.30 this morning. Uh, and uh, got that pocketed out, and then I put the 3D finish on to carve. Uh, and um, I sat here with it till about 5.30 in the morning, went in and crashed for about an hour and a half, uh, and then uh, I had training sessions to start that started around 7.30, 8 o'clock. But uh, it's been running ever since, and I'm, I'm in line 1,476,542. It's uh, halfway done. But what I had done is I split the design like uh, Stephen and Camaro recommended. I split the design and uh, I was going to run one with the 32nd inch uh, Bono's bit and one with the 30 degree engraving bit. Now, this is an Onsrud uh, engraving bit. Um, it is the 37 27 uh, 30 degree engraving bit with a three thousandths of an inch tip. So it's got a, 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 a blunt tip, three thousandths of an inch, 30 thousandths, 30 thousandths, not three thousand, 30 thousandths of an inch, 0.03. And so that was going to be the bit. I kind of, it was a gamble between a fruid, Freud bit, fruit bit. Uh, but, uh, this one was the 7103. It's kind of a common, you know, uh, engraving bit for them. It's, a um, 15 degree V bit, seven and a half, half angle, uh, 15 degree included angle. Uh, and, um, it's got a 16th of an inch, uh, blunt tip on it. And the, um, so I wasn't sure about uh, using that. I wanted to stick with the 30 because that's what I had calculated it for. Let me see if that, uh, I don't know if my camera will pick up or not. But uh, this has a 16th of an inch, uh, 15 degree, you know, bit engraving bit. But I decided I wanted to stick with the 30 degree engraving bit. Uh, and this is just a one flute, uh, 30 degree with a 30 thousandths inch tip. And uh, that was what I was going to do the second half with. What I not was, what I am going to do the second um, bit, uh, the second half of this carving with. But I am three quarters of the way done. Uh, so if we, I'm going to try to share my screen. Let's see if we can, if uh, Google will have a conniption fit again. And um, this is the carving that I'm doing here. This is the first half. And uh, the 
I'm on, like I said, line 1,476. So it's still got a good ways to go. Uh, so far, the carving run uh, was running about 12 hours or whatever from 3.30 to now. So I would say 3.30 in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon is 12 hours, right? And we're at 7. 34 to 15. What is that? 16 hours? Am I right on my timing? Am I thinking correctly on that? Um, and I'm pulling up that link for you, Mike, for the uh, Spectra bit. The, um, but so it's still got a ways to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the carving off the table so we can at least see what the progress is and see the quality of the cut and see how things are going. We're going to talk about the setup and everything, how I set it up and stuff. Uh, and then I'll end up putting it back on the table and continuing on. Uh, so while I'm thinking about it, so I don't forget... I'm going to write my line number down. Uh, 1,476,542. Because I've got to start from that line. I've got to start from that line again. You know, you guys still with me? All right, good. Um, the... <clears throat> Let me see here. 51404-K. It's been crazy. So it's it's been going and everything. That poor old route is just wrong. But just to give you a general idea, uh, on my bit, I'm using a 32nd inch tapered ball nose bit. I'm stepping over 8% of that 32nd inch diameter. So it's stepping over very finely. Uh, I'm running the RPMs around 11,500 RPMs uh, uh, with that small diameter bit. The flutes are real small. So I'm running around 11,500 RPMs and uh, I'm cranking not too fast. I think I'm carving around 60 inches a minute uh, in, in things. And the... Um, Here you go, Mike. Let's see if it'll, I don't know if it'll let me put a link in chat, but that's the link to the bit if it lets it put it in. Um, that's that Spectra bit. So uh, what I'm going to say is, <clears throat> why don't we to make this somewhat uh, entertaining instead of me talking now that everybody's back and everything and we're 24 minutes into this. Why don't we, while the getting's good, why don't we get over to the table? Oh, uh, my camera just froze. Uh, it's moving now. Okay. Why don't we get over to the table and see what we can do? Now, if you guys, I'm going to keep a close eye on the chat. If for some reason you're losing me, see, it's freezing up again. If for some reason you're losing me, let me know. Um, but we'll uh we'll muscle through the best we can now i'm gonna change over to my headset and hopefully y'all can still hear me hello everybody all right. Everybody says they're still good there. Okay. Um, I'm going to change over uh, to my other camera for a minute. All good wood shop and 3D carving. Hi, all. Hey, hi. Hot. How you doing? Uh, so we're gonna get down on here, and we're gonna we're going to look at the setup and how I've got it clamped. I just got I've got some mechanical clamps on it. 
Uh, I do have a vacuum pump and I do have vacuum pods for vacuum clamping, but uh, I don't have a vacuum bed. I've got individual pods and I thought that would be uh, by putting the individual pods out there, that would be, you know, a little iffy. Eventually I'm going to make a vacuum, little vacuum template uh, type of uh, rig to go with my vacuum pump. And one day we'll talk about that out in the shop. We'll, uh, we'll look at that little fixture and everything. Uh, you know, some folks in the chat room have integrated uh, vacuum chambers and stuff in their CNC's. Well, I don't. Uh, so I got to make my own, but I got a nice little vacuum pump and we'll go from there. Uh, just, just teasing Steven and just teasing. All right. So um, the carving looks great. Would you like to see it? Let me show you. Let me get over to the camera. I was just kidding. The carving looks great. Let's see here. Let's. Okay. So. Bum, 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 bum. All right. People are slowly starting to uh, pop back in and everything. All right. I'm going to take this camera freehand for a second. And uh, I'm going to try to shine a little light on the subject. Oh, maybe not. I might have to just take it off the bed. Let me see here if we can. Y'all aren't going to see that. It's going to be too dark. But let's talk about uh, real quick uh, the clamping. As a matter of fact, I'm good to go to raise the machine up. I can stop right where I'm at. So I've already written down my line number. So let me hit stop. And uh, let me raise up the Z. Okay. You guys and girls still with me? Stick with me. All right, everything's uh, everything's locking up. Somebody, Roger said the link works. Okay, good. Um, I'm hoping uh, everything works out well. All right. So we're getting, uh, what I'm doing is I've written down my line number and everything. And uh, then we're going to raise the Z up and move the router out of the way. And we're going to talk about uh, the board and all. And then you'll be able to see me again here in just a second. So you, you 41, stay tight and stick with me. I'll be right back to the table. Just got to get my uh, CNC software. All right, 0955 is working great. Let's move that down the table there. Okay. Now, what I've done is... Uh, I've got just a bunch of mechanical clamps to hold this thing as flat as I could because I didn't have a vacuum table. And it was very important, the depths and things that uh, I was carving. So what I did is, you know, I have my touch plate and my touch block and all that stuff. But uh, sometimes you just got to get in there and do it manually. I wanted to make sure everything was correct. So knowing that Z0 is my waste board, what I did is I brought my bit down to the top surface of this candle stone and uh, I had the bit just kissing the top and I pro manually programmed into the controller software that that thickness was 0.243. And from there, you know, everything is kind of working from there. So even when I pocketed out the 0.098 pocket here, 
when I took the V bit, I even came in with the V bit and came down into that pocket and told the software that that particular spot was 0.09. Uh, eight and um, so that uh, everything is carving from a certain space. I did not want to do any automatic touch offs and uh, or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to manually address this because such of the thin material. Now I'm going to take uh, one of my fences here and um, where is the my main fence? And I'm going to unclamp this piece because we're going to be um, moving and I need my reference. Oops, wrong way. Nope, that's not the right clamp. I got, uh, I just had it in my hand. There we go. Okay, that's my reference so I don't lose my X and Y because I'll, I'll, I'm going to take this off the table so we can look at the progress and everything of it. So I'll be able to get it right back where it was and I'll be able to set it up so I'm not afraid of that uh, even though it's halfway done. But I want you guys and girls to see what running from... Uh, all right. So let's, uh, let's back up here. And uh, back the camera up, get ourselves some light. Now it's kind of dark, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put some light behind this and everything in a moment. But you can see the pocket area that I removed out of there. Uh, that was the pocket area and everything. And then the carving itself. Uh, I wish the detail would kind of show up very well, but a uh, very clean carving. Now it looks very lifeless, and that's what a lithophane is all about. It looks very lifeless until you put a light behind it. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So this is as far as it got. Check it out. This is the other half that hasn't gotten cut yet. This is, you know, carving at a 45 degree angle, starting in this corner and working its way up. Since 3.30 this morning, that's as far as it got. That thing was stepping over super fine. But the detail is phenomenal. It's, I wish you guys could see it up close. But, you know, even when I... There's not barely a little light. You can start to see a little bit of the detail come through. Wait till we put the light behind it. Uh, and then we're going to get it back on the table and start carving. So let me switch to my main camera uh, over here off the CNC. Hopefully I'll find this somewhat entertaining. All these camera changes. Sorry. Um, oops. Oops. Hey, how's it going? So this is the lithophane. Looks very lifeless here uh, and everything. And I'm going to just kind of give you a little sneak peek. So if I put it um, into this light, you can start to see a little bit of it. But let's get a real light behind it. Uh, the LED box or the LED frame that I'll be putting this into, uh, I might do a little step-by-step -step on that. I'm going to uh, put some LED strips and things in. Um, Jerry Williams made a beautiful lithophane, not to get off topic here, but he bought a LED sheet that's a light sheet that's four lithophanes off of Amazon. Uh, and it plugs in with a USB and uh, it got three power sensors, you know, low, medium, and high. And it does a great job of illuminating this. But I could not find that product on Amazon anywhere. And uh, when I was doing the woodworking shows, he his lithophane had the notes and where what it was called and where it was on the uh, back of uh, his lithophane that he made and let us use at the show. And I took a photo of it so I could remember it and I can't find that photo. So it didn't do me any good. All right. So let's see if I can still a light. OK. And uh, wait, where's my camera? at? Let's see here. I don't know if is that going to work? We need we need some close up action. Ah, it sucks when you don't have the stuff that you want when you want it. Let me see here. I don't think this light's bright enough to do anything. No, that's just a little spotlight. Hold on. I'm trying here, guys. I'm working on it. We're, we're trying to get her figured out. Um, let me stand. The, I tell you what. Let me do this. Let me... Stand the lithophane here. Uh, 
but I'm pump bomb. You're gonna stand up for me. Hold on a second, guys and girls. Okay. All right. I'm gonna switch back cameras. We're getting it. <laughs> Jesus. Don't ever get frazzled. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's get up close and personal with this thing. Okay. Now, with that, you can see the bears and all, but that's not lit. That's not backlit or anything. So we're going to get some backlighting going on here. Hang tight. This is a cluster. Never mind. Let's see if we can. Come on. Camera, do me right here. It's not the, uh, Best LED lighting. It's a big hot spot for you guys. Let's see if I can get it to tone down a bit. Sorry, I didn't have my headphones on. I'm trying to get it to focus, ladies and gentlemen. We are just having all kinds of fun times okay well that's about the best lighting situation i'm gonna get uh for you guys uh until i get a a, a proper led uh light panel behind it uh and also get the rest of it carved right all we're seeing is the uh bear nibbling on the leaves and everything. Um, but if you could see it in person, oh my goodness, it's, it did really well. It, it does really well. Now I haven't cleaned it. This is right off the table, right? So I haven't washed it or, and scrubbed it or anything like that. Now I, I would love to uh, be able to show how clean it's carved. That candle stone, there's no little fibers. There's no little, um, there's no there's really nothing to clean, but I'm still going to uh, clean it um, and, and everything. So hopefully, add Matt, sir. There we go. Individual digital pixel matrix panel, an LED light matrix panel. Cool. Ed, uh, thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. I'm going to look up that link and see if... Uh, what that does now that's a it looks like it says eight by eight wonder if we'll have to uh set up a an or for a 10 by 12 but it looks uh really well and it's this is the first carving with the uh tapered ball nose bit uh it's not the v-bit carving i will create a comparison i will actually finish this project out uh and um create a comparison of the two uh, and then I actually have to carve my actual lithophane of the uh, couple that we had in class and everything. But um, 
Uh, yeah, Mary Beth uh, thought it was going to be the couple. No, it's the bear. <laughs> the bear. Uh, this was the sample photo because uh, uh, Stephen in the group said, hey, it'd be a good idea to do half with one bit, half with the other. Now, I will tell you this. I'm going to uh, share my screen with you and tell you that my timing in Vetric was way off. Um, let's see if I can get uh, the Aspire back up here. But the uh, timing was way off as far as uh, it was supposed to be an eight-hour run. Uh, and, it, and we're in hour 16. So let me see if I can get that lithophane open back up. Okay, good. Ed says there's different sizes on those mats, uh, those LED matrix mats. I'm definitely going to have to look at uh, getting one though, because man, it really illuminates the whole back perfectly. You don't have hot spots, uh, and it's a nice, even, diffused lighting, uh, and it uh, works very well. Right now, I actually have an LED spotlight behind it, so that's why I have a hot spot on the shoulder of the bear, real bright there and everything. And uh, let me know that y'all are still with me and stuff. <laughs> so let's uh, get this changed over for a minute. I'm glad everybody was able to find that second link, uh, you know, uh, and stuff. So um, that next link. So I've got this project divided like i said uh, in 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 two parts one for the ball nose bit one for the v bit but when i were when i were when i was calculating uh the tool pass my uh v carve clearing that pocket tool pass says uh it was going to be an hour it only took 20 minutes my 3D finish cut with the ball nose bit says 12 hours and 33 minutes. Uh, and we're, we're way past that. And my cut with the V bit, which was when I was using the 60 degree V bit, it was only like five hours. But with the 30 degree V bit, it's 13 hours is what it's saying. Uh, and um, with that 30 degree V bit. So I, I'm at a tie here between the two of 13 hours and 12 hours. But again, this is a much smaller section than this section over here. And this one has been carving since 3.30 this morning, nonstop. Um, so all in all, it's gonna be running all night um, and everything. Uh, Marv, would an LED edge light uh, sign work? Uh, you know, possibly. Um, and the, uh, as far as an edge lit sign, you know, when, when it's an edge lit sign, that, that, that light refracts into the carved areas of, uh, of, of the, uh, the, the sign. And um, the, I don't know how well that would backlight. Now, if you guys want to hang with me for, three seconds we could test it because i happen to have an edge lit sign that i can run and go grab give me a thumbs up if you want me to do that to try that and then you can also see my 3d uh, led light edge lit sign um but um you can adjust yes tom uh tom is exactly right you can adjust uh vetric for the runtime error so uh for the digital wood carver oops Sorry, for the digital wood carver, our rapid rates. Uh, here's here's my error. You know, uh, inches a minute. We run uh, 150 and 1.3. Right. So if I you know close that and I come over here, um, the times unless I do a recalculation, the times are still showing uh pretty aggressively so let's see if we can open this up now let it catch up to itself all right good we'll go for it all right 
All right, I tell you what, hang out, chat with each other for just a minute. Let me grab the uh, 3D uh, LED edge lit sign and uh, we'll see what we can do with it. So hang tight for just a moment. Hello guys and girls, I'm back. All right. So on my times, now this is more, uh, looks like, is it getting more appropriate? Yeah. So we're getting more appropriate on the timing here. Uh, it was 20 minutes instead of 39. And yeah, it was about one minute um, on that. So now we're, now we're cooking with some gasoline. So the 3D finish cut uh, was supposed to be eight hours and it was 12. So I got to change my scale, my scale factor. And the V carve cut um, was going to be another eight hours. So the timing was, you know, right about, you know, uh, the same and everything. Uh, let's switch off to uh, this camera here and let's switch back Sorry, guys. This is not a good in the shop class tonight. It was so many errors. Hey, how you doing? All right. So behind me, if I turn off my shop lighting, okay, um, this is the edge lit, oops, uh, three dimensional sign here, right? Uh, just simply, you know, that's what it looks like when it's carved. It's just uh, cast acrylic, kind of gives it that three dimensional look. Right. So as far as the theory of will an edge lit sign illuminate the back of the bear, I can already say no. It won't. OK, unfortunately, 
uh, because when an edge lit sign is designed that in the diffused areas or the carved areas, that light refracts. Um, it refracts into those carved areas. So we're not getting an even distribution light. And you can actually see in the bottom there where the LEDs are, the hot spot uh, on the base. So it's not going to, it would not make a good backer. Okay. You can actually see the little ring, the little halo ring of, you know, this here. So the, um, you know, possibly a good option, but not a, not a good option. Now, um, the, without any lighting on it, you can kind of see the detail of uh, the carving, you know, just the plain carving itself with no lights on and all that good stuff. But uh, it's still got a long way to go. We're going to do a little bit of carving tonight. Let me turn those uh, shop lights back on. Woo! And, um, you know, if, uh, if I were to bring my little LED setup and everything ooh, behind me as we talk, let's, uh, what do y'all think of that edge lit acrylic sign? That's pretty cool. A little three-dimensional design. Uh, you can look those up online, uh, three-dimensional LED edge lit sign vectors or designs and graphics, and you can find all kinds of three-dimensional uh, designs and stuff. <clears throat> and, uh, and all. Now, if I go through, look, that's, that's my, that's my little lamp right there. <laughs> if I go through and plug this in, oh, I do not want to be you guys and girls, but, um, the, ooh, this light is way too bright, right? Too bright, uh, for the bears and all, but let's turn out a little bit of lighting and see what we come up with. So if I come over here and hang that light up here so it doesn't fall and kill me, stay there for a minute. If I kick off the shop light, uh, we'll go ahead and kick this off too. And I'll turn that so you don't see the computer screen red iron at you. If I come back in here, Ooh, that's going to blind you. Sorry. Um, you know, that hot spot, that, that lighting is really bright, but, uh, you know, nice looking carving, not bad at all. Uh, it'll be a nice, uh, looking, uh, when it's done, you know, the nice looking picture. So good detail. I love the candle stone. It really gives a nice, uh, representation and all that stuff, right? I've just got to set up my lighting, my little light box for it. And I need to make sure it, one of the key things to make sure of is if I'm using strips of LEDs, that there is some distance behind there because the only thing I'll see is hot spot strips across the back of this, right? Uh, I need a nice diffused panel. Now, Jerry Williams is actually in the group. Jerry, uh, I was just talking about you about the back panel that you found. Now, Ed shared a link. Uh, Ed uh, shared a link of a diffused panel and all. But I cannot find that panel that you bought on Amazon. Uh, that's what I was looking for for the lithophane. Uh, Jerry, you know, if you ever, uh, if you happen to, uh, if you, you happen to ever find that link again for the back panel that you bought for your beautiful lithophane that you gave us, um, I would love for you to share it in the comments of this video when it's done and everything. Um, but uh, the candlestone, um, you know, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, you know, I've, I've carved it materials, but um, uh, 
a big fan. Now I'll end up scrubbing this and washing this with soap and water and a stiff bristle brush. Uh, but man, there, if, if we can, uh, look here, there are no fuzzies. I mean, this is right. I, you guys saw me take it off the CNC. There's no fuzzies or anything like that, uh, at all. It's a really clean cut. Uh, and the detail is nice. You can kind of see the detail a little bit there. But I'm looking forward to seeing this whole thing finished. I'm really curious to see what the V-bit does. Um, really uh, curious to see what the V-bit does uh, and everything um, to do that side-by-side -side comparison. Now, as far as time-wise, uh, Camaro and everything, based on this, uh, my... V-bit, it's hard to see. You guys probably won't be able to see the numbers here, but uh, it's eight minutes and 10 seconds. And, uh, or, or I'm sorry, the ball nose bit, eight minutes, 10 seconds. The V-bit, eight minutes, 33 seconds. So very little time difference. Much, much more in line with one another um, from my class on Tuesday because my class on Tuesday I was calculating with a 60 degree V bit, you know, to uh, versus the 30 degree. So I calculated with a 30 degree with a very, you know, 3,007 inch tip, 0.03, 30,000 inch tip. The ball nose bit has a 32nd inch tip, 0.03125. So they're very similar as far as that goes. So the timelines are very close. So the question is, is, um, is it, you know, the comparison for this was to see if it was worth the difference. Well, there's not really that much time difference. So now it's going to come down to the quality between the two. And, um, crystal, uh, candlestone gifts.com candlestone gifts.com is where I buy my candlestone. Uh, five of these, uh, uh, 10 by 12 sheets, uh, 65 bucks. Or you can buy them individually like $7 a piece or, or what have you, something like that. But um, yeah, so at least you guys got to see a partial carving, right? There's still a lot more to go. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a second. We're going to get a clamp back on the table so I can do a little bit more carving. And this thing will end up running the rest of the evening. Uh, and, uh, then I'll, uh, when it finishes up here in a few hours, um, I will change over to the bits and that will run until it's completed. Uh, and I'll let it run until it's completed and everything. So I can get it done tomorrow because this weekend, I really want to do the PVC one. I want to, I want to turn one on the fourth axis. Now I told you in class that I haven't done one yet, you know, uh, that I haven't done the fourth axis one yet uh, and everything. Uh, I've carved on uh, PVC. I've actually taken when I when I couldn't afford lithophanes, uh, when I couldn't afford Corian, which by the way, uh, Corian, you know, you could go to local cabinet shops and stuff and uh, that, that do countertops and they always have scraps where they cut out uh, sink openings and things like that. And a lot of times they'll let you just have their scraps and all for nothing. Uh, you can, they'll let you raid the garbage bin and all that good stuff. But um the, when I couldn't afford, you know, candle stone and stuff like that, I used to, uh, take a hot, hot air gun, uh, that I used when I was doing electrical work for, uh, uh, conduit and everything. But, uh, and, uh, I would run in upright. I would run the bandsaw. I would take the hot gun, uh, hot air gun, and I would flatten it out into, sh into a sheet. And then I'd put it like in a cookie sheet and I'd put it in the oven, and let it rest and all. And I would carve on that, but uh, then I could start to get all now. I, then I could start to work with Corian and now Candlestone. I'm growing up in the world, guys. But when I was first starting, you know, five years ago, I, uh, you know, I didn't. I had limited materials to work with on the CNC when it came to stuff like this and everything. So I just made do with whatever I could do, you know. Uh, but now I don't have to cut PVC and flatten it out and 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 carve on that. Uh, and stuff uh, from there, like from cutting the PVC uh, and going from there, I went to from there. I graduated to going to Walmart and buying this three pack of cutting boards, right? White cutting boards. And they had three different sizes in there for 12 bucks. 
and uh, I was able to uh, use that for carving and all. That leaves a lot of fuzzies. It was a pain in the butt to clean up. I wouldn't recommend that. But um, now you have, you know, white acrylic, you have, uh, you know, uh, candlestone, you've got Corian, and there's a new product out. There's a new product out for carving lithophanes, and I still don't know the name of it, but uh, if you type in lithophane materials, on Google, there's a third product uh, that people are using for cutting lithophanes and I'm um, hearing they're getting good results and stuff. But I'm going to stick with the Candlestone and candlestonegifts.com uh, forward slash shop, I think, is the uh, menu. But um, let's get back over to the CNC and let's get this thing. Um, Jerry, yeah, Jerry mounted uh, his uh panel and he says it was a tracing panel uh he mounted it with two-sided tape to the back and it was it was a one solid it was cool uh jerry had this little stand this little it was a whole nice little package uh like imagine if it was uh, you know i could imagine if he was gifting it to someone uh it came with this little folding stand so it uh you know it held in there uh it had the back panel it had a plug-in uh, USB uh, plug-in. It had a little, it was built into the light panel, a little uh, button where you could tap three times and it was great. And so he mounted that back panel uh, to his uh, lithophane with two-sided tape and he called it uh, tracing panels, tracing panels, uh, very size tracing tables. Um, yeah. So, uh, and stuff. Uh, is where it, what it was called and everything. It was a really nice panel, really, really nice. It did a nice diffused lighting all the way. Uh, it was sharp. All right, I, I talked too much. Let's get back over to the table and let me get this thing clamped back down so I can uh, pick up where I left off and then we'll, you know, get her going. All right. We're going to do the famous camera switch. Whoa. Hey, that's a familiar looking project. I still haven't done anything with that yet. I got to do something with that soon. Um, all right. So let's back this up so y'all can see me here. Uh, basically, I'm just going to uh, get this back into position uh, where it was. I'm going to turn my two cams here uh, to uh, get that uh, held up against here. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw in my... What I did is I ended up just so I could get it and make sure the panel was nice and flat as I ended up putting a bunch of mechanical clamps all around this, uh, you know, just to ensure that it was a nice uh, flat surface and everything. So from here, now this fence here, uh, that gets, that'll get removed. It will get removed. Ugh. And then I've got this big old clamp here. Uh, I, I ran out a little, the, my little wedge clamp. So I got this big old clamp here. And I'll hold this side down and everything. So nice uh, flat piece. Now, right. Now, got to get back and continue where I left off, right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go into the code. Remember that notepad thing that I did last time? we got to do that again because it's a 3D model. Remember, I need my speeds and feeds and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's an anomaly to have to do that. But um, let's uh, switch back to... The computer screen for a minute. I'm going to close down uh, Spire. I don't need it open anymore. And I'm going to go into uh, my file explorer. <clears throat> I promise I'm going into my file explorer. Oh, you guys hanging in there? I'm glad you're hanging in there. Um, all right, so the 3D finish, uh, Tapered Baldos, that's the toolpath that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up 
uh, with uh, Notepad, Notepad++. Plus plus. Uh, so I'll open it up with that. And then what I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the feed rate and the plunge rate and the spindle speed uh, down. I'm going to kind of inject it into the code, into the code uh, and everything. So let Notepad++ plus plus, and everything is kind of running a little slow. So hang with me. We'll get it here. All right. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm going to go all the way to the very bottom of this. And it's still loading. There is no bottom. Okay, there's the bottom. All right. So we are at, we are, uh, when it's all said and done, remember, I'm at line 1,476,500. Uh, in this G code, there are 2,295,909 lines. Okay. Uh, now you can't really see that very well. Uh, I don't have my screen. Uh, zoomed in like I normally do for the um, for the uh, resolution resolution, and so I'm going to come down to one million four hundred and seventy six thousand. One million forty six. And it's a race. It's coming. Okay, one million four hundred seventy six thousand. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, five hundred and forty two. There we go. There's my line. Okay. Now, on that line of G code, I'm going to uh, put a space, just kind of push a space down there. And I probably should have done this before I went and found that line of G code. But uh, I'm going to go up here and I need F50. And 12,000 RPMs, I'm actually 11,000. My router is not controlled by the software, so I do not need that. But if you have a spindle, you want the S code, you want to copy that. Uh, and um, there is no, uh, the feed rate is 50. It's, I made the plunge and the feed rate the same. So all I need is that F50. And I'll just throw in the S12,000 just for kicks and giggles. Um, let me get back to 1 million 400 76,000 542. And I raced right by it. Wow, it's fast. It's fast, man. Right here. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, here, I'm going to just go ahead and throw in that S12,000. Let that uh, type in. And I'm putting it right behind the uh, line that uh, I'm finishing on. So I need a capital S 12,000 there. And uh, then I'm going to delete that line and on the right behind that next line, I'm gonna put F 50. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I had to do. I just got to, if you have a different feed and plunge rate, your plunge rate goes first then your feed rate. Uh, but this is, they're both the same. So it's F50. So I'm going to save this file, save. 
And uh, now I can come into my TNG software and open my file. You guys still with me? It's awfully quiet. Uh, it's loading those 2 million lines. Uh, it's about 60% done, 70, 80, 90, and 90. Voila. Okay. There we go. All right. Now in my G code, I'm going to come down to my line of G code. 1,000,000. 476. Now, one of the things that I am going to do um, is from where I need to be and everything, 1,476, I got to come down another 200 lines. Let's go a little, let's go, let's grab a hold of this and one main four. It's fast, ladies and gentlemen. This is the tedious part, finding the damn line again. One million four hundred seventy six thousand three four five six. There we go. Five hundred and forty two. There's my line of G code. Let's pull this out. You guys can't see it. It's probably, I don't know, how clear is it on your end? It's little, it's real small. It's 1920 by 1080, but uh, there's my lines of G code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go about 10 lines up here. Uh, and uh, let's split the uh, screen a bit. Let's split the screen. I'm going to right click on that line of G code and I'm going to tell the software to go to that selected line X, Y position. Okay. So the router is going to go to that position. Okay. Now, uh, typically uh, I can, um, I could right click on that and say start from selected line and it'll start the router up if you have a spindle it takes about 10 seconds or so for that spindle to get up to speed so what i recommend doing and i even though i don't have a spindle uh what i like to do is i like to turn the spindle on first okay get it running uh then i'll come over to the line of g code and choose start from selected line Okay. Did I say? All right. So now you see that green screen pop up. That when the uh, project is finished, um, it fills in the finished area with green lines. So you can see how how much I've got completed and how much uh, further I've still got to go. Uh, let's get that full screen for a minute. So this is where I started and um, it's moving along those lines pretty good. Uh, but uh, you can see that my even at a 50 feed rate, right? I'm the maximum speed that it's getting up to because of all the up and down. And I've got my plunge and my feed rate at 50 inches a minute. But the maximum I'm touching, I'm, I'm not even going over 15 because there's so much detail up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, so that relationship between the feed rate and the plunge rate, you know, there's not enough time 
for the CNC to ramp up to that speed. Because by the time it gets gets ready to ramp up that speed, it's decelerating and, and, and everything for its uh, next move. So that's why the cut difference is so, or the time difference is so long, is e even though oh, I had the okay i lost y'all for a minute hopefully you can hear me now And uh, hopefully y'all can hear me now. I lost you for just a second. Uh, that was my fault. Clicking too many things when I shouldn't be. Um, but what I was saying was before uh, I lost you guys was I don't have enough. It, there's not enough time for it to ramp up to speed. So even though I have my scale factor correct in Vetric, uh, it's basing it on a 50 inch feed rate when it, and when in fact it's only running maximum 18 inches a minute right so we've got to take those considerations into effect even on your big machine if you've got you're running 100 inches a minute for your feed rate 100 inches a minute for your plunge rate or 200 or whatever uh it's only going to go as fast as it, it can't ramp there's not enough time for it to ramp up to that speed because of all the details so you're probably only going to be getting you know maybe 30 40 inches out of it you know in my case i'm getting 18 and all so it's uh it's a crazy thing so right now according to the estimated time uh there is another few hours to go uh Quite a few hours to go. I'm only on million, one million lines. Got another million to go. <laughs> All right. So while that's running, I'm going to switch cameras back to me for a minute so y'all can see my wonderful face. <laughs> And when you're um, in my, especially with my laptop and all, with it running this two million lines of G code and all of that data so fast and everything, it's 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 putting a little bit of a strain on the uh, on the project. You know, when when my when when G code is only a few thousand lines or you know a few hundred thousand lines, you know, it's pretty good. But when you're processing over two million lines of G code, it puts a little bit of strain on the system and all. So now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time. If you have questions, now's the time to answer them because there's not a whole lot to uh, show on this. Just gonna, it's carving 18 inches a minute, line by line, two million lines. So there's not a whole lot of exciting, oh yeah, man, watch that thing carve and chips flying all over the place going to happen with that 30 second inch bit so now's the perfect time to ask questions about anything if you've got it okay and like i said on these uh three-dimensional uh edgelet signs and things like that uh, it's a simple v carving uh v bit 60 degree v bit but uh they're free you can find a bunch of them free online uh you type in three-dimensional uh, edgelet sign vectors. And there's a, there's a nice website. I forget what it's called, but uh, they have a whole bunch of them that you can download for free uh, and stuff. And so I kind of chose the... Yeah. 
All right. I'll let y'all get some uh, questions out there. All right. My Amazon package shit. Just got that alert. I'm looking for that. I'm making a uh, cool little controller box for my 2440. Uh, it's going to give me a direct secondary um, isolated power supply for my control board. A little bit of buffering. Uh, it's gonna the control box is gonna give me uh, a little bit of uh, isolated direct power for my control board, so I don't have to rely on the computer and the um, USB power. Uh, going to provide that 5 volt signal or 12 volt signal sorry uh, and then there's going to be a place to plug in my laptop USB cable and everything so yeah it's freezing a little so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the machine it's buffering quite a bit yeah because of uh, the processing and everything Hopefully it'll catch up. Yep. So hopefully we'll catch up at all. Uh, so sorry about the buffering. What I was saying was, is uh, my Amazon package just uh, shipped. I'm waiting for that to come in uh, Monday so I can build my little control box. Uh, it's going to have a uh, power adapter for plugging my laptop in and uh, cell phone charger. Uh, it's going to have a step-down voltage in there that'll be powered directly to my control board, so I don't have to worry about my um, USB cable providing the five, the five to twelve volt signal, uh, and um, it's a five volt signal from the USB. But I want a twelve volt to the board, so I don't have to worry about disconnects and things like that uh, when I'm running long runs and stuff. And uh, it's a product that uh, if I do well uh, and make it and it works well. Uh, then I may start manufacturing it for other people. Yeah, so uh, this is cast acrylic. You always want acrylic. Uh, you don't want extruded plastics, no plexiglass, lexan or anything like that. And uh, the thickness is 0 0.354, 0 0.354 inches thick. I get my plastics from U.S. Plastics. Give a shout out to U.S. Plastics. They got a good supply there. But... Uh, the only reason I order online from U.S. Plastics is because I couldn't find a dealer locally. And lo and behold, I didn't realize that there's actually a dealer um, literally three miles away, two to three miles away, that sells um, cast acrylic sheets. So I'm able to now get my cast acrylic sheets from them. But uh, before that, for the last five years... Or so, you know, um, U.S. Plastics was uh, my go-to. And they have them in 12 by 12, 12 by 24, 24 by 24, 24 by 48. They have all kinds of sizes of sheets and everything, and they'll cut them to size for you and everything. Uh, Tom uh, says uh, eBay has a lot of cast acrylic. Absolutely. Uh, and all, but point three five four is the thickness that I uh, recommend. Now, this base here. I didn't make this space. Uh, you know, I'm a woodworker. I didn't make this space, but uh, I, I, a friend of mine did. Uh, he, that's all, you know, uh, he's a customer, a digital wood carver, and that's all he makes is, uh, or he makes a lot more than that, but he makes a lot of edgelet signs, sells a lot of edgelet signs. And uh, so he made this base for me. Uh, basically, it's kind of like just a two tier. Uh, it's got a plug in port in the back there uh, that uh, takes. A simple uh, 12 volt power supply just plugs right in there and you know nice little LED strips and everything so uh, he made me a base uh, and I made the light and um, yeah I liked his bases I said yeah I like those bases you know and uh, 
I basically wanted to, wanted him to give me one so I could steal his idea and design. No, I'm just kidding, Kevin. But um, or not, Kevin, David, Dave, not Kevin. Kevin's my other woodworking friend. Just kidding, Dave. But uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, Ed, you got somebody two hours from you as well. Uh, any other questions, guys and girls? Now's the time to ask questions. That's this is what in the shop time is for. Uh, it's just kind of a, uh, you know, it's a Q and A, shopping and all, uh, and uh, everything. I tell you, I can tell summertime's coming. My uh, octagon. Oh, that wasn't me. That that wasn't me that time. But something froze up and glitched. Um, I can tell summertime's coming because my octagon picnic table video on YouTube is a very popular video and everybody wants the plans and I usually sell the plans, but I don't have the link up anymore. Uh, so I've been giving the plans away uh, and my email is just blowing up octagon picnic table, octagon picnic table, octagon picnic table. Could you please send me the plans? Could you please send me the plans? And um, yeah, it's been busy. Okay. We got a question. Hey, Lainey, in Notepad++, if you type Control G and type in the line number, you should go to the line the program you're looking for. Awesome tip, John. That's great to know. Control G and then type in the line number, and it should go to the number in the program you're looking for. Dude, appreciate that tip. Thank you very much. Control G. I love those keyboard shortcuts. Um. Why can't you run a higher feed rate on the candle stone? I can run a higher feed rate on the candle stone. But again, it doesn't have enough time to get up to that feed rate. So it only has enough time to accelerate to a certain speed before it has to decelerate and things. So it never gets up to the feed rate that you run. Um, but uh, I could run, you know, 100 inches a minute. I could run... 150 inches a minute. I could run 60. I could run 50. I have this set for 50, but I'm barely even scraping 20 because it doesn't have time. When that CNC gets on that long straightaway, you know, then it can get up to those feed rates, those rapid rates for carving when you're doing, you know, uh, carvings and all, or even if you have, you know, little detail, you know, it can get up to pretty close to your feed rate speed. But when you're talking, you know, little detail, all those little leaves and mountains and fur on the bear's back and all that stuff, it doesn't have enough time to get up to the feed rate uh, and everything. And all. Um, so. You did the LED sign with the V-bit. Yes, I did. Uh, the LED sign, I always, all my edgelet signs are cut with a V-bit. I haven't tried, you know what I haven't tried, uh, which I think would look pretty cool, is reverse carving a 3D model uh, with a ball nose bit. You know, doing a 3D model in a piece of acrylic, and when you light it up, it's three-dimensional, the model, you know. Uh, and what, what, where I, where I, what I always, what I always see is when I look up edgelet signs on Google, I always see the one of Jesus, the 3D model that someone did where it looks like Jesus is just like right there at you, right? So um, uh, I always think to myself, I want to carve a 3D model in edgelet acrylic. But no, I use a 60 degree V-bit uh, for all my edgelet acrylic signs. 60 degree V-bit. Let's see here. How's your store coming along? I would like to know that too, Crystal. Um, the store is coming along uh, uh, fine. It's the security. Um, the company his uh, that's uh, that I've paid uh, that was doing my business background checks and everything for the insurance and all. They just kind of like they didn't fall off the face of the earth, but you know they're uh, a little hard pressed to get a hold of now and stuff. So I'm kind of stuck until I get security. I, I will not put anything up for sale on my website or I won't even recommend my website for anyone to go to until it's secure. And so, uh, you know, I could uh, go to another company, but I've already paid 
this company. So I'm just waiting on that SSL certificate. And, you know, I could use a, you know, a free SSL with my web hoster. Uh, I could do this. I could do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, with e-commerce, I want protection. Cover my ass. You know what I mean? So uh, it comes with a, you know, a $2 million policy and stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, I need to just cover because we're talking people's personal information, credit card numbers and all that stuff. And I just won't do it until it's uh, done right. So we'll just wait it out, I guess. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I do send out PayPal invoices and people can pay with PayPal if they want to buy something from me and stuff like that. Um, oh, Lloyd asked a question that I missed. Thanks, Lloyd, for giving me that reminder. Let me go back up and see where it was, Lloyd. There it is. After creating a new project in V10 of VCAR Pro and clicking on OK, I do not see my dimensions in the bottom left corner of the drawing tab. How do I turn that feature on? Uh, that's a good question because sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. So uh, let's find out, Lloyd. Let's see if we can uh, figure that one out together. Let's go into our Vetric software. Bum, bum, bum. I'm not going into a spire. I'm going to go into VCAR 10. VCAR Pro 10. Uh, Tom, so uh, while I'm waiting for VCARV 10 to open, Tom, I'm thinking you can speed up the Z feed as well uh, in your control software. Tom, I have the Z feed rate, the plunge rate. And the feed rate both set to that speed. Camaro, uh, type in the comments uh, what sounds like a future project. Let me know. All right. So what um, Lloyd was asking was, you know, uh, us usually when you create a, a job, whatever it might be, and you uh, click OK, you'll have the dimensions down here in the bottom left corner that kind of show the job dimensions, width, height, and depth but he's not seeing those dimensions. Now, one of the things could be, uh, Lloyd, is if your screen resolution is set too high, uh, then it kind of zooms everything in and you won't see it because it's way down here. So you got to check that. And I'll give you an example. If I were to minimize my screen and change my Display resolution, display settings, reverse 3D model on the back of a light. Yes, yes, that would be a great project, uh, Camaro. Uh, a cast doing uh, doing an edge lit acrylic sign all together would be a great project. Oh, I think I froze y'all up again. That gear is actually part of the screen share that I'm doing. It's not like y'all lost me. <laughs> that's my uh, that's my settings window getting ready to open. <laughs> and they're like, oh shoot, we done lost them again. Uh, let's see here. Let's go down to uh, screen resolution. Sorry about the buffering, guys. I'm changing my screen resolution. So if I change this to a 1280 by 720, right? Uh, instead of 1980 by or 1920 by 1080, give it a second to catch up. That two million lines of G code is um, 
totally Uh, I want a 12 by 7 20. Y'all can hear me. You can't see the um, mentions because they're further down and there's no scroll bar to get down there.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a sign from the internet gods, the computer gods, and all that. And whoever said about the Windows update at the beginning of this chat, it might have something to do with that, too. I thought you were joking around, but uh, my, my computer said it's ready to update and shut down. So it could be something to do with. Anyhow, uh, we are going to end it here. This is this night has been a uh, it's been foobarred from the beginning. Um, and, uh, and I'll hopefully you, hopefully you like that lithophane. I'll post pictures of it, uh, and, um, of the finished product and everything, but, uh, man alive, it's, uh, this broadcast has been, uh, brutal for all of us and you guys, thank you for hanging out for it. Uh, half of you are gone, but, um, it could be a combination of the windows update, the 2 million lines that I've, that's trying to process, uh, the internet, I don't know. It just could be everything all together and then trying to change my settings and stuff, you know. But um, Lloyd, hopefully that answered your question before I crashed. Hopefully, uh, you know, your settings, your res change of resolution is probably down there at the bottom. Um, if there is, uh, can I use continuous board? Harvey? Are you talking to me or someone else as far as can I use one continuous board? The hard part is getting zero for each file. Um, let me know. Man, what a cluster that was. All right, everybody. I am burnout for tonight. Uh, I've been going since 3.30 this morning, and this little fiasco has been brutal. Um Now, with table, it breaks your project into smaller files. Uh, yeah, I could have done tiling uh, and uh, broke it into, uh, you know, I could, have, I could have broken it up that way and, done, and tiled the design a little bit to break it up into smaller sections and run one tile at a time. Uh, that's, you know, that's a good point. Uh, with tables, it breaks your project. And I don't know what tables is, but I know what uh, tiling is. Uh, and uh, it may be the same kind of you use your tiles, your project bigger to your small to you, than your your table. Um, but that project is only uh, 10 inches by 12 inches. It's not bigger than my table. Uh, but I could still tile that project into smaller G code sections, uh, you know, smaller uh, tool pass and everything for quicker processing and stuff. But um, I think that's what Harvey was talking about uh, as far as that goes. Or y'all were having a conversation on yourself, I, and then I interrupted and with my own little intake on what <laughs> relating it to my project. Anyway, all right, guys and girls, I'll post pictures at the Spindle Training Videos Facebook page uh, of everything once this is done. Uh, I'm even going to try to carve a round uh, candle lithophane. Uh, can't I call it a candle, but a round lithophane on a piece of PVC this weekend? See how that goes. Uh, sorry about tonight. We'll jump back into it on Tuesday. I do not know what the project is for Tuesday night. I like to give you guys and girls a little bit of a heads up advance notice. Uh, we may be doing some 3D modeling for the knife handle, or we may be doing something completely different. Either way, I will post it, uh, uh, the, what the class is going to be in the spindle training videos, Facebook page. And, um, until next time, thanks for sticking with me through this headache of a day. I'll see you soon. Got to vote for a knife handle, so we may do that. We'll throw that in there. Uh, and then in the future... Look out for edgelet signs and uh, 3D models and edgelet signs. Sounds cool. We'll do that. Good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me through this.